hi guys welcome to my youtube channel my name is goodness john and today we're going to be making this four circle simple peplum top now let's go into the video so i'm going to start by folding my measurements so i folded the fabric in two it's long enough to accommodate my measurements and the length and the width of my measurements i folded it again so folding it again it's going to i'm going to fold it one and a half inch less so the one and a half inches for my zip allowance so this is folded in four, so it's accommodates quarter of my measurement plus zip allowance. So I'm just going to iron the fabric so that I have a neat and a clean um, fabric to work with. So now I'll start applying my measurements. I'll start with my shoulder measurement. So my shoulder is seven and a half inch divided by two plus half an inch so that's sorry my shoulder is 14 divided by two that's seven plus half an inch that's seven and a half so at that point i'll drop down by one inch and mark that next i'll measure the chest line from the one inch drop so that's my round boss which is 37 divided by six plus one and a half so i have six i have seven and quarter or three quarters so i rounded that up to eight because i want it a bit free so i'll use a ruler and connect this and draw a straight line so that i have my chest line so this is where i'll be measuring my ham hole length so i'll measure my bust line from the top so my bust line is 10 and a half inch so i'll use a ruler and connect that as well so these are the lines that i'll be working with to apply my measurements so now i'm just measuring my waist length my waist length is 17 so plus half an inch that's seven sorry plus one one inch so half an inch allowance at the top and half an inch allowance at the bottom so plus one inch that's 18 inches so i have that on so my full fabric is 18 inches i don't need to cut it out so i already have my waist length measurement so now to applying my measurements around the chest line so that i can make my round um my armhole so i'll transfer my shoulder measurements to the chest line so i can have a straight line so my shoulder measurement was seven and a half i measured that on the chest line as well and then used a ruler to connect the straight line the shoulder from the shoulder to the chest line Okay, so after I have that straight line, this is the straight line that I will use to mark my ham hole. So I will measure that line and divide it by 2. So I have 8 divided by 2 is 4. So I'll mark the midpoint 4. I'll use I'll mark it and then at that point I'll go in by half an inch. After I go in by half an inch, I'll use a curve ruler to connect from the tip of the shoulder to the half an inch i went in by to the end of the chest measurement so the um bust measurement the full length so i'll connect that to give me my ammo curve if, if you don't have a curve ruler you can do this freehand so just make sure that your curve is a smooth curve and it's not crooked it's not sharp it just looks smooth next i'll be applying my waist measurement my round waist measurement so my round waist is 28 divided by 4 is 7 inches plus my dart marking one and a half inch for my dart allowance and then from that one and a half inch which is eight and a half i would mark two, um two inches zip allowance so the bust i'll divide the bust by four four inches plus allowance my one and a half inch allowance and then i'll connect it to the waistline so next i'm going to be applying my neck line measurement so i want a canoe neck or boat neck the really wide neck but not really deep so i'm going to go six inches from the midpoint that's my width and then four inches deep so i'm going to measure four inches from the top and then connect my six inch to my four inches like slightly with a slight curve so my front and back is going to be four inches it's going to be the same depth next i'm going to connect the one inch drop to this neckline so after i've done that the next thing i'm going to do is to work on the zip allowance so i'm going to reduce this by one and a half and connect it to the neckline to account for the neck the back slope 
so the neck is not the back is not going to be straight because our back is not straight it is a little bit slanted so that's why i removed one and a half inch so i'll just be connecting this so this one and a half inch i've removed from the lip allowance i'm going to add it on the side of the back so when i'm cutting i'm going to add that one and a half inch at the side of just the back piece not the front piece now i'm just splitting the sides open so i can apply my one and a half inch at the down of the back pattern after i split it open i would measure my one and a half inch and this is just going to apply on the bottom two pieces not the top pieces so i'm going to cut out the front piece on the original place i marked it but for the back piece i'm going to cut out the one and a half inch on that side excess so you have to be mindful so you don't cut out the extra one and a half inch on the side of the back this is what it looks like so now i'll go ahead and cut out the rest of the pattern next i want to mark where my dark space starts from so from the center front i'll mark my bust pan so my bust pan is seven inches divided by two that's three and a half plus half an inch allowance so i'll mark that at four so at that four i'll make a little cut so that i know where my dart is going to be so this cut is going to is going to affect both sides the left and the right sides of the front so after i've marked that for the front i would lift the front pattern up and then mark the measurements for the back as well so the back um the back piece the dart is starting from the zip allowance so i'm going to remove my one and a half inch allowance for zip first after i've removed the one and a half inch allowance then i'm going to measure the four inches don't forget when we're going to sew the zip that side is going to go in so this is just to bring the measurement to be at equal places so after i cut out my that my little cut i'll then take the front pattern and the back pattern and use to cut out the lining after i've cut out the lining i'm going to make a little cut on the lining as well for where the that will be for the front and for the back so after cutting that out i'll put these pieces aside the front and the back pieces of the upper body next i'm going to work on the sleeve so i somehow while i was recording i skipped the part where i did the sleeve so i just cut out the um the material and the lining that i'm going to use for the sleeve i have a video on how to draft a sleeve if you don't know how to draft a sleeve i'll put that up so i'll cut out the sleeve and then i'll put that aside and start to work on this now for the flay i'm going to have four circles so that's one for four one for 40 degrees flay so that's going to be four circles joined together one circle is 360 degrees so that means four circles is 360 times four which is one for 40 if i was making a single flay i'll be dividing the waist circumference by four because i'm going to cut it on fold like fold four times but because i'm making four circles i would, have, I would need to divide my waist measurement by four circles because i need the circumference for each circle so my circumference is going to be the round waist divided by four which is the number of circles so my round waist is 27 divided by four so because i'm going to have zip allowance my zip allowance is one and a half inch so one and a half inch on both sides i'm going to add my one and a half inch to my waist to my round waist so my round waist is 27 plus three inches which is my zip allowance so it will give me 30 so now i'm going to be dividing 30 by four to give me the circumference for each circle so i have that at 7.5 so now i'm going to add one inch joining allowance because i'm going to be joining it on this side so joining the circle together by half half inch so i'm going to add one inch to this 7.5 so my new circumference is 7.5 plus one inch the one inch allowance which is 8.5 so the circumference is around the circle but we're going to be joining this by four joining it 
half inch that's why we're adding that one inch so the circumference is around the circle and because we'll be we'll be folding the fabric into four like a square which is a quarter of the circle i will divide 8.5 by four so to give me the circumference for one quarter of the circle so this is my 8.5 i will divide this i'll just leave this leave this on so to get the length of the flay so the length my length of flay is the half length minus the full length of the um top minus the half the waist length so the full length of my top is 25 inches and my waist length is 17 inches so i'll subtract 25 17 from 25 and then add my allowance so my allowance at the top and at the bottom which is one inch allowance so that will give me nine so for the circumference of, of the circle the circumference of one circle of the four circle is 8.5 so to get a quarter circle the quarter of it is going to be 8.5 divided by 4 which is 2.125 so i'll take my tape and go around the the curve of these of this piece so i'm making my pattern for each circle so mind you i'm going to make in a quarter circle when i open this quarter circle up it's going to open up to a full circle i'll be cutting on fold both edges of the of the fabric will be on fold so i'll take my tape around this top here and then try to get 2.12 on the top and then mark what circumference where i get that measurement wherever i get the measurement i'll mark it so i found my measurement at i found my measurement so i'll mark i'll measure where i've got that measurement i can measure i've measured it now and it's one and quarter so i'll measure one and quarter all around from the top to get a quarter circle just a small circle so this is where my measurement is where i got the 2.125 by the time i measure it around this circle i'll have 2.125 so when you open it up like open up the quarter circle you're going to get the full circumference so i'll just draw this and then measure it so i've gotten the measurements that i want From the curve i'll measure the length so my length is nine inches so i'll measure the length from the curve all the way around to make another bigger curve so this is going to be my full length so after i've measured this out i will cut it so i'll have like a quarter circle so after i cut out the quarter circle uh this is the pattern i would use to cut the flea so i'll be cutting on fold so I'll fold the way I folded now, the way it looks, and then I'll fold again to cut one circle. But because I'm cutting two circles, I folded it twice. So I'll pin the pattern on the fabric on fold and then cut out the flare on the fabric and the lining. Next thing I'll do, I'll take out the circle and then split one side open, cut it open. The one open side will be where I'll be joining the fabric by. So I'll be joining by half an inch. I'll join it to make one long circle and then I'll join for the lining. That means I'm going to have one long main fabric and one long lining. After joining it, I'll take it to the ironing table and iron it open. I'll do this for the main fabric and the lining. Next thing I'm going to do is to couple the lining and the main fabric together. I'll be using hemming gum and crinoline. So I'll arrange the main fabric and and lining together and then place the crinoline on it and then place the hemming gum on the crinoline so i'll now join it together sew it together arranging it so you can either pin it all together before you sew or you sew carefully you sew gently whichever is faster so i've pinned it together because it's faster for me to just pin it all together and then sew it so i'll be taking up the pins and then make ensuring that the lining the main fabric the crinoline and the hemming gum are all arranged together and then i'll sew it all the way to the end sometimes when you sew flay the lining may end up being a bit longer than the main fabric when you're sewing so when you get to the end and the lining is a bit longer it's normal you can just trim off the lining the excess of the lining after you've ironed it so i'm going to sew this all the way to the end when I get to the end, I'll sew the lining to the main fabric on the sides as well. So I'm going to be sewing the bottom and the sides. 
So I've sewn it and ironed it. The next thing I'm going to do is to sew the sew it together at the top. I'll be joining main fabric to lining at the top of the flea. This is what it looks like after joining. So now my flea is ready to to be attached to the upper bodies. I'll just put it aside and start working on my sleeves and my upper bodies. So I already cut out the sleeve and I cut the lining two inches shorter than the sleeve. So I've cut it shorter because I'm going to use the lining to pull the sleeve up. So I'll first attach it at the end, the hem of the sleeve. I'll first attach it that way and then I'll pull it up and then join the sides together. For join the main fabric side to the lining side. So I'll do that for both sleeves. I've joined the ends together for this sleeve. So what I'm going to do, because it's shorter, you can see the gap. So I'm going to pull it up, pull this lining up to reach the top of the main fabric sleeve. And then I'm going to sew it straight, like attach it together at the sides. I've done the sides for both sleeves together. So next I'm going to turn it to the right side and then iron it. After ironing it, I'll attach sleeve main fabric to lining. I'll use it, I'll sew it all around just to attach it together to make it one. So I'll do that for both sleeves. So I've sewn it now, I'll iron it and fold it in two. So now I'll apply my sleeve measurement. So I'll apply my upper arm measurements from three inches from the downward slope. So my round upper um is 13 inches so that's six and a half i'll mark it there and then go to the end of the sleeve and mark my round sleeve at that length so my round sleeve at that length is 10 divided by 2 is 5 so i'll mark my 5 inch and then connect both lines together so i'll go and sew this on the machine i'll mark it for both sleeves and then go and join it together on the machine After I've joined it, I'll iron it open and then I'll turn it to the right side and iron the inside seam on the seam line. And then after I've ironed on the seam line, I'll turn it to the side and then iron it. So I'm going to be ironing it thoroughly. Basically, we need to iron very thoroughly when you, you're sewing. So after doing that, I'm going to attach the bodies to the flay and then the sle sleeve to the top. So I apologize while I was filming this video I lost footage of me joining the bodies together. So I already joined the front and the back together with the lining. The next thing I'm going to do is attach the sleeve to the upper bodies. So I'll be attaching it from the arm armhole. I'll place the armhole of the sleeve to the armhole of the um bodies and then join it together from the armhole all the way around it. So I'll place them together and then take the main the bodies and place it over the armhole like I'm doing now. So I'll just open the seams and then place it over it and then take it to the sewing machine and sew it all the way around. After joining the sleeve, I'll split the zip allowance of the sides open of the upper bodies open and then join the flay to the upper bodies by half an inch allowance so i'll be placing the flay on the upper bodies by the waist and then join it together and couple it while sewing if you notice that the flay is a bit bigger than the waist of the upper bodies you can make little pleats so that it just accommodates so i'm making little pleats on this so that it's all the flakes goes into the upper body's waist after i've coupled that i'll fix the zip and and then i'm done with the dress with the top so this is my peplum top i hope this video has been helpful and easy to follow please like comment subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you're notified whenever i post a new video i would have a video of how to attach a bodies up on my channel if it's something you're interested in thank you for watching and see you in my next video